happy Sunday. Aren't we all just so excited to start yet another week in the Matrix? Hey, what's up guys? It's Em and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for those of you that are new here, hello, my name is Emily. I'm a junior here at Boston University. I'm an aspiring therapist, author, and I absolutely love helping people. So for today's video, we're going to use a recent rejection I faced as some life advice because apparently that's just how I cope with things. So for some of you that may know, I'm self-publishing there's trash in the background. Don't look at it. Just don't look at it. Stop looking at it. Why are you looking at it? Now we have to move it. No more trash. So as some of you may know, I'm self-publishing a book this summer and I recently moved on to the next stage of publication, which is looking for an editor. I sent out a lot of emails to the BU community, like seriously about 40 emails. And the first thing I got back was a lot of no's, like and some people were basically offended. I even considered using their time to help me. So that hurt. I felt like a failure. Kind of like the past, oh, I don't know, four years of my life I've spent working on this manuscript which is gonna go in the garbage and... No one was gonna like it, no one was gonna read it, it was gonna be trash and just kaput, gone, bye bye. But, let me tell you, like all setbacks, we just needed to give it some time. Some time to defrost the situation. <laughs> Now, rejection as a whole is a very complex topic, so to clarify, we're strictly talking about rejection in the terms of performance. We're not talking about social rejection, we're talking about what we feel when we pour our heart and soul into something and it's not appreciated. First things first, on a very simple level, we all have a baseline level of motivation. Motivation to feel good about ourselves like we belong and like we've done well. All creatives know that the things we create are influenced by our emotions, experiences, and things we may be going through. So when we make something and it's rejected, it hurts. When our performance is jeopardized, the whole infrastructure can fall down. Suddenly it's not a matter of receiving criticism for one project as it is saying to yourself, wow, I really may not be good enough. I may not be good at this after all. Specifically, people who suffer from depression have a really hard time separating external criticism from their own internal worth. They misattribute poor performance to their self-efficacy and how good they are of a person. This, of course, can be extremely harmful because we're not a measure of our successes. We are people regardless of what we do or achieve. And if you have depression, that's hard enough. So doing poorly can make it 10 times harder. However, there are three things I've learned that tremendously helped me get over rejection and continue trudging forward with my creative projects, regardless of what other people have to say. But first, it is 1.30 and I'm seeing my brother later and I promised I'd make him brownies, so we're gonna do that super quick. This is low-key the best box brownie mix you can buy. You can fight me in the comments if you disagree, but... This bowl is definitely not big enough, but I don't have any other bowls and I also don't have a proper spoon to do this with, so we're just gonna have to make it work, I guess. I don't have an egg, I only have egg whites. Is that bad? Am I gonna mess this up really bad? How much do I even do in this? Like how much of this is an egg? <sighs> I don't think it's that bad. I think, I think it could be the right consistency actually. In the final cooking fail, I don't have a pan that's small enough to make the brownies. This is the only pan I have. So I built a little tin foil. I built a little tin foil wall to make it a nine by nine. I 
think this might actually work. Okay, so while those cook, let me introduce my first point, which is acceptance. Just like how not everyone is going to like us, not everyone is going to like our work. But that doesn't mean the work isn't good, it just means that it isn't what the person was looking for. If that your first attempt didn't go well, and try to look at it from different angles. For me, I realized that a lot of no's came from people who just didn't have time to take on another project, and that's completely fine. The key first step to not letting criticism get under your skin is to acknowledge that it exists. Acknowledge that people aren't going to like everything you do, and that's okay. It's not the end of the world, it's simply another opinion. My second tip is to keep trying. The only way to get used to being rejected is to, well, continuously be rejected. However, in order to keep trying, you have to have a strong sense of self. You have to believe in what you're doing to be able to push through the no's and the people who don't believe in you. I love the storyline behind my novel and I know 100% it can help people out there. So there is absolutely nothing anyone could say or do to keep me from publishing this story. You see, if you let one rejection stop you, if you let it halt you in your tracks, you're gonna stop creating. You're going to let external stimuli become your internal value and you're just gonna stop trying. But that is exactly what you have to do. You have to keep trying. You have to keep searching for the people who understand you. And more importantly, you have to keep trying to find the people who are willing to work with you. There is a big difference in people saying, no, this isn't good. And people saying, no, this isn't good, but here's what you can do to improve it. And honestly, someone who is in your field, whether it's photography, videography, art, or again, any other media, understands the grind, they understand that everyone has to start somewhere and they're going to help you through that. So truly believe in yourself and keep trying. Seriously, keep trying. Every single one of you who watches this video, I want you to go out there and keep trying because one setback, one rejection, one failure does not define who you are as a creative. There's countless opportunities and what's important is that you simply keep trying, you keep perfecting your craft. Okay, so before I dive into this hopefully delicious brownie, let me introduce my last tip, which is to use rejection as a learning opportunity. The best way to handle setback is to view it as a learning opportunity, because if it's something you're learning from, then it's not something you could dwell on and sit and reflect about it being such a bad experience. No, find the good in it and find what it's taught you and what you've learned from it. From my experience, I realized that not everyone is going to believe in my project and that it's going to take a lot more effort than first anticipated to get people to help me and to find people I can work with. But that's okay. At the end of the day, getting so many rejections made me reach out to more people, which ended up being really good because I met an amazing editor who's currently working on this project with me. So to sum it up, it's not easy to feel rejected, but if you can accept it, learn from it and try again, you got it, you'll get it done. The most important advice I can share with my fellow creators is to believe in yourself. Believe in your work and believe that you are capable of achieving the things you want to achieve. None of the points I've mentioned in this video are viable unless you know your worth. And if you don't, that's okay. But I think you know where you need to go from here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please subscribe and like this video. It helps me out tremendously. I appreciate you if you've watched up until this point and I will see you all next week.